Hey, it's Mamoon Ahmed. What's up, man? How's it going? Good, how are you? Great. So you're going to be, uh, what are you going to be demonstrating for us today? So we're going to do a demo using our Express Evaluation Board. Oh, with, this uh, one here? Yeah, this one right here. And we're going to be using Microelectronica's click board, which is this guy right there. And those of you who don't know who Microelectronica is, they actually make a lot of different stuff, but Clickboard is one of their lines. Oh, yeah, they have a several different um, Clickboards you can use with um, different applications, That's right? correct. Awesome. That's correct. So this, this Clickboards are basically just a stand, uh, like a standalone sensor board or add-on board. They just plug it into any of our dev boards or any other board, All basically, right. and just start prototyping. Can't wait to see the demo. But before we get started, mm -hmm. let me introduce the guys in the booth. I got uh, Matthew Dickens and Wayne Freeman. They're going to be taking your comments and questions, and uh, same, they're going to be get, handing out um, prizes. What's up, guys? Hey, guys. Welcome. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, everyone out there watching, I see we have a little bit of participation in the live chat already. Keep that up. That's awesome. Hello, we'll be... YouTube. Yep. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> this is, this is my wanted... partner in crime, Wayne. I just wanted to throw you off. And uh, <laughs> well, you did. You did a good job. Sorry. It's, uh, this is our first night stream. So hopefully uh, that, we're that, calling it? that dad, <laughs> hopefully that dad joke night. landed in the right way. But um, yeah, so if you want to participate, a couple great ways to get involved right off the bat is to shoot us out a hello or a hi on the uh, chat as well as microchip or live stream at microchip.com. You can be emailing that for questions as well. Um, we're going to be handing out some sweet prizes later on, so make sure that you're participating because we'll be pulling those winners from the chat. Wayne, you got anything else for us? Yeah, I got a couple of notes here. First of all, I see uh, a couple of guys on the, on the stream, Andy and Mafuz. Hey, guys. Um, let me um, just remind you, if you are not subscribed to Microchip Technologies' right, YouTube channel, right. please hit that subscribe button. Please like the like this live stream. That lets our management know that we, you know this. You guys love it when we get to do more more of this sort of stuff. Um, and also hit the notification bell as well, so that the next time we go live, you guys will automatically be notified. I think we're good. I think we're good. Take us away, Edwin. Awesome, great guys. Can't wait to hear some of the winners. Uh, remember, people uh, watching and listening, um, this is a great opportunity to uh, give us questions, feedback. Uh, you know. Let, uh, make sure Wayne and uh, Matt are working out there in the, the, the stream and feed. So, uh, Mamoon, tell us about the, a little bit more about the board you'll be using. Yeah, so we're going to be using our MPLAB Express evaluation board. <coughs> so this is one of our latest boards that is packed with uh, one of the PIC-16F 18855, which is one of our latest microcontroller. It's packed with features. It has many, many different types of peripherals that, you know, that you're going to be using in our applications. Uh, one of the best part is, is uh, this using this board and with the Microelectronica's click board, it's super easy to, uh, to do any prototyping. If you're going to do it quickly, if you're going to do rundown demos, it's, it's very simple to and do. And that just supports uh, one click, right, for at the, mean at the time right now? That's correct. If they wanted to use multiple, they would have to use a different one of our other boards, yes, like so Curiosity we, boards? Mm -hmm. So okay. we do have a Curiosity high pin count board that does have two different types of clicks. So that's, in that case, you know, it, it can actually be more creative. So you can actually do something in one of the clicks, and maybe you kind of want to send that data over to somewhere or do some other protocols. You can use a secondary click to do that. Right. Yeah. And we have plenty of uh, different clicks that work with these boards. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. So we do have, uh, Microelectronica makes over a couple of hundred different types of click boards. So we have plenty of selection for anything that you want, uh, anywhere from, you know, uh, temperature sensors, uh, any medical devices, this, and all those things. So there, there are so many of them. Yeah. All right. Great. And anybody interested, they could go to either Microelectronica's website or our um, our Microchip Direct. Microchip Direct. That's have correct. Plenty yeah. of the ones that we support. On yes, there. we do sell those uh, in Microchip Direct as well. That's great. Yeah. All right. Well, walk us through um, your demo here. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look what we're going to be doing today. Uh, in uh, I do have a little diagram here that I can I can talk about and, and that will give us a very good understanding of you know what how the demo is going to look like and everything okay. um, so we do have you guys can see this uh, MPLAB Express evaluation board to the right and this board has the microelectronica bus so using a microelectronic click board which we're going to be using today is the heart rate click that's going to go plug in directly to the board and uh, remember guys this is just one of the demos that we're doing right i mean yeah. this idea can be applied to many other different types of clicks many other different types of sensors that we have and you're just going to plug this in and uh, get the data set up the uh, set up uh, all the peripherals and everything in mplab express ide which i'll talk about a little bit later uh, in details and then get the data off from the data if you want to view that we want to use the built-in cdc link which is the communication link 
in the express board and transfer the data over to the computer. And we'll actually see how we can use that data to plot a graph. That, that's great, because I mean, a lot of customers want to either have an idea of adding a, a function or a new feature to the application, mm -hmm. and having that possibility to just take one of the clicks right. and add it on, that's it's it's a great fantastic. Way get, it's a yes. quick way to get prototyping. At least plan out your, your concept, right? And then from there, you can move on to that's actual correct. laying out the board and doing what, um, you know, yeah. Selling, making some money. Yes, exactly. So you can, once you have a prototype or actually, actually have an idea, a proof of concept ready. Exactly. Proof then of from concept, there, yeah. you can definitely Rapid go prototyping, for prototyping, that's what we want to do. Correct. Yep. That's correct. Yes. Cool. All right. Uh, so let's go back to our IDE. Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to go through the whole process, right? And uh, before we do anything, there, there are a couple of things I want to remind you guys. So we are going to be using MTLAB Express IDE today. Uh, we do have another uh, version of IDE that we actually install on our computer, which is MTLAB X IDE. Uh, a lot of people are actually familiar with that. And, and that's it has free been to download own. for anybody that's interested, right? That's correct, yep. yeah. And, and a lot of people who have been using that, there are a lot of people are familiar with MPLAB XID. Yeah. So Express is, is very similar. The look and feel is almost identical, except for it runs in a browser. Right. So, you know, it's completely online. You don't have to download anything. For those that don't have the uh, reliable con uh, wireless or uh, landline, they could download the, the yeah, full yeah. version. Yeah, they can download the full version. And, and then they be can, able to, yeah, don't have to worry about Yes, that's great. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and yeah, so, I've looked at it, and it, mm -hmm. I can I couldn't tell the difference. Yeah, yes, it's very hard to tell the difference. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, and it's you know the best thing is it's very portable, so you can actually use it pretty much any portable devices even, and uh, it it stores all your code online, and we also have a big community right. where we have examples and everything that uh, we have posted, uh, so you can actually uh, use that as well. Awesome. Let's go to Matt real quick for a question and comment. What's up, guys? Hey guys. Yeah, we're getting some great questions feeding in. Um, first, and probably the most important question I've seen so far is, Mamoon, we had a shout out to you. They were curious where you where are you from originally, Mamoon. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. So wow. that's All a right. great question, I guess. Uh, so okay. I, 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 I was born in Bangladesh. I was uh, born and raised I, uh, in Bangladesh, in, All right. uh, in one of the districts in Bangladesh. And I moved here in uh, 2010, late 2010, and I finished my graduation from Arizona State University. That's right. I graduated from there. Sun in electrical doubles. engineering. Sun double, yes. And uh, I started working at Microchip uh, right away. Actually, I've been working here for My about three years, years now. Three years Three years? Three years almost, wow. yeah. Time flies. Cool. Yeah, almost cool. a little bit, two years actually, almost three years now. So. Awesome, okay. <laughs> right. Awesome, thank you, Mamoon. Yeah, and so like we said, guys, live stream's a way, great way not to just get to know the products, but also get to know us as well. Um, and hopefully reach out to some of you guys who don't get to work in here every day with us. So another question was, pulling up your presentation again for the second, uh, the question is, what is the right side of the board explained in the presentation? So could you kind of walk us through a little bit more about what the, the different, I guess, the pinouts are on the board and stuff like that? Yeah, sure. Yes, Matt, I can definitely do that. So if you look at the board, um, I don't know if you guys can see the mouse moving around there. Not very well, no. No, okay. Uh, well, uh, oh, there is it, it is. Enough? Yep, yep. Okay, there it is. all right. Oh, actually, it said uh, that he, I've got a clarification question. Which microcontroller is used in oh. that board? Oh, there okay. It's one of our PIC 16 uh, F1855. And 18855. Yeah, it's right. a 8-bit yeah, microcontroller. Cool. Thank you. And all then right. lastly, uh, this guy's getting a little bit ahead of the ball, but I think it's a quick question. So, right. how efficient is the code generated by MCC? So MCC usually configures uh, the registers that you have on your device. So it's usually written in, uh, uh, basically, it's this configuration of your uh, uh, registers and all those. So it's pretty efficient. I mean, the only way I guess you can get more efficient than that is uh, writing in assembly. But yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's no, pretty definitely efficient. MCC on the definitely codes. makes it a lot quicker and rapid to get your, right. uh, your code running. Mm, yeah. it's, uh, it definitely it, it removes that, str you know, that that extra task of having to go through, go through the data sheet and figure out what yes. pins connect to what, what yes, registers definitely. go to what, definitely really kind of yes. makes that. Um, makes it much simpler. I mean, we're going exactly. to go over MCC later on. I'll kind of go over all the files and everything that's created. Right, and then, and yeah, the, stay tuned. And you'll the, see how, yeah, how we'll go over walks live through demo, his, the, the demo, right? Yep. So stay tuned. We'll see. That, that'll probably answer your question. Yes. Yeah, cool. Thanks so much, Moon. Why don't you take us back to the uh, heart Any rate and get started? No winners yet, oh, but right, uh, right, right. the pot That's is good. cooking. All right. Okay, cool. Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> all right, so first of all, like we were talking about MPLAB Express and MPLAB XID, I hopefully that, that's very clear to you guys. Uh, but uh, let me show you how I got here, how I got to this MPLAB right, Express page. Out. So this is, this is the box. This is the box that came with the MPLAB Express evaluation board. And if you look at the box, it, it has a web address, which is mplabexpress.microchip.com. I know it's probably hard to see in the camera. But don't worry, we'll have the but information uh, on the, the comments. And the uh, yeah, yep. on, the, so, on yeah. the descriptions, yes. And uh, if you look at the screenshot, I'm right there. It's actually mplabexpress.microchip.com or microchip.com slash express. Takes you to the same page. And here, it, it kind of gives an overview of what MPLAB Express is. And uh, if you go, you scroll down, you have some uh, videos that we actually talk about how to get started with Express. And we also have uh, some do documentation and downloads as well. Um, now, if you actually click on the examples, uh, it will actually take us to an example page, which is uh, all the examples are created either by Microsoft employees, uh, Microsoft engineers, or uh, third party like you guys, any of the viewers here yep, can actually so if you ever, participate. Uh, yeah. You know, creating some code you want to share with uh, us or other people out there, you definitely could upload it and we'll take a look. And if it's uh, microchip quality, we'll put the big old meep on it. If not, um, we'll still leave it on there and you can share it and people can yeah, always download it. Yeah, the community can definitely yep. share codes in here. I mean, there are uh, over uh, 226 different types of codes. And this is a great place to start, guys. I mean, if you start uh, programming something that you're not very sure of or some new device that came out and you're trying to make and use of an example, right. uh, just to start with an example and then go from there. There's easy code, right? Like, hello world, just to yeah, get yeah, you started. Yeah, yeah, very simple uh, stuff, yeah. And a lot of the codes, uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of those codes you'll see. I mean, if I click one of these, it oh, does. Oh, who's that handsome devil? Oh, right look at there. that. <laughs> That's a nice uh, profile pic, man. All right, thank you, Edwin. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of these actually has step-by-step -step instructions. This one is actually I personally wrote, and uh, if you can see that these are pretty much hand-holding to the process of you know getting started. So you know the first everyone we see that uh, when they start programming. Uh, the, the first step is usually the barrier would be, oh, I don't know how to get started. Exactly. And yeah. we're Especially if you're new to uh, our microchips uh, evaluation yes, board or yes. products. Yep. And That's you want to try them out just to get started. Or you want to just prove out your concept mm -hmm. for a, a project you might have for school, class, yep. or for anything, the next yeah. million dollar idea. Yes, you have to definitely. start somewhere, right? Yep. It's, it's a great way to get started, for sure, yeah. Well, all right, so you guys have all these options available. I'm going to go back to the IDE. And the way you go back to the ID is, is just go to this page and click in this big MPLAB Express ID badge, and that will uh, open up the MPLAB Express ID. Uh, and if you, who, those of you who know the MPLAB X, it, it looks and feels very similar, very similar to MPLAB uh, X. And now, I have logged in. I have logged in with my MPLAB Express login, which is the same as Microchip's uh, Microsoft right. Direct login. Well, you don't have to, right? I mean, you don't it's have on, to. Right. You're right. If you want to get started right off the bat, just mm -hmm. uh, you know, plug and play. You don't have to create an account. But if you want to save it, then that's that's when you, correct. Yeah. Okay. If you want to save anything, uh, right. then definitely you should say you should log yeah. in because otherwise it's not gonna. Right. But if you want to just if you get a board and just you know if you're a winner, test it out. Yep. Maybe Matt sends you a board and you just want to test it out and plug and play. Yep. You don't have to create an account. You just no, no. You, you can just someone. just jump in and nice. you can just start programming like right there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all right, so at this point, we are going to start the demo, all right? So let's, I'm going to create a project first. So I'll click uh, File, and uh, File, then we're going to do New Project. So I'm going to do a standalone Microsoft product, yes. So click Next, and the device. So remember, guys, we were talking about earlier that the device we're using is PIC16F18855. Right. Uh, I know it's a mouthful of <laughs> numbers, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but the it, easiest. <laughs> yeah, it's one of our latest 8-bit pro uh, products. That's so, correct. Yeah, so. And uh, this is actually written on the board. If you look at the board and the target micro is, is there, it's, it's, it's clearly written PIC16F18855. Now, the easiest way I can find this in the device list is I'm just going to type 18855. And you can see there are two different uh, microcontrollers came up. And uh, the first one is PIC16F 18855. Second one is LF. So the first one is on the board. So I'm going to select the first one. You want to choose the F, right? Because yeah, That's the LF correct. is the voltage one, which is not on Which that is board. not on this particular okay. board, yes. So once, once you select this, uh, there, we're going to click Next. And then it's asking for a project name. I'm Ooh, just going to call stream. it. <laughs> sure, live stream. <laughs> uh, and it does not take space. Stream heart rate. How's that? Yeah. All right. So we're going to make heart rate monitors, right? So let's do this. Let's click on Finish. All right. So we have a project created already. 
Now, we're going to use MCC like you are talking about right. earlier, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the MCC is going to make our life much, much easier. Let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we're going to see how it is, OK? So I'm just going to click the MCC badge. And then it, it actually shows up with this pop-up box that says, hey, make sure you, you got your you know, uh, Java installed, which is Java JRE. Which yeah. You just need the runtime environment. You don't need the full Java JDK, which okay. is the development kit. So as long as you have that, you don't have to click in there. So I already know that I have it. So I'm just going to yeah. go to the next one, which is download MCC. So I'm just going to click on download MCC. And I'm using Chrome. So depending on your browser, it might look a little different. Uh, Chrome actually warns me that, hey, make sure that you know this file that you're downloading. It could be a security issue, but hey, we're downloading from right. Microchip, so it's all secured. And uh, I'm just going to click on the jnlp.jnlp file. It's a small, tiny little file. It's a Java web start file. Right. And uh, once I click, it's going to take some, uh, I guess, a few seconds yeah, to download seconds, the file. Right. Depending yeah. on if you're on, if you're on LAN or Wi-Fi. Right, right. Uh, depending be, on your internet, internet connection. connection. Yes. Uh, if but it's you pretty are, fast if you're Oh yeah, it's still pretty fast connection. if you have a solid yeah. internet connection. I already, I already got that up here. I mean. Uh, if you if you're running, you know, I would say in a dedicated line that in a desk, desk especially, right. or you know, you have a hey, good Wi-Fi at home. That doesn't look perfect. like the pic you have, though. Oh yeah, good point, Edwin. <laughs> but you see, the name is correct, right? Oh, uh, yep. So, yeah, yeah, it's a pic sixteen. Yep. Yes. So what happens is uh, MCC defaults to a package type that we do not have this particular package type on MPLAB Express Evaluation Board. Right. But I can easily change that. I can easily change to the to make sure that I have the same one, right? Uh, let's see it. Yeah. So the way you're gonna change it is right uh, at the end of the page. You have the package type. Yeah. This is a UKFN. It looks like. Okay, so UQFN, okay, yeah. So we're gonna just select the drop down menu and look, we have an option to select UQFN 28. It's a 28 pin device, it's a UQFN package. Right. Just gonna select oh, that and look yep. at that. Now it, it looks uh, like exactly like the part. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Nice. And you know the even a, a, even a better part about this? So it's a 28 pin device, so if you wanna keep track of these pins and what you're doing, mm -hmm. it's gonna take some time, right? So the easiest way to do it is, you know, is um, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna select just one of the outputs, Great. right? All right. And well, if I Hold that thought though for a second. Okay. Let's go over to uh, Matt and Wayne. Hey guys. Hey, yeah, no, we're getting some great questions coming in here. Um, and Mamoon, you've got quite the crowd out there tonight. Your brother wanted to shout out and say hello. Oh, awesome. Is that on the yeah, feed? You oh. really shouldn't have gotten him that iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, that kid. Uh, but no, we're getting some great questions. Um, shouldn't he be in bed? I'm just saying, I mean, uh, I'm, well, I mean, I'm not, it's, it's not, I'm it's not his parents. <laughs> it's, only, it's only nine something. Years. Yeah, well, uh, hey, this is educational, now. right? Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. That's hey, you know, my, my brother actually, uh, it has, uh, I got him this board uh, earlier, actually, this year. And uh, he oh, started yeah, to play us. with yeah, it. Yeah, he, he made. Uh, he took a program and was able to develop. Exactly, some of it. he started. He made a blink, blink in the LED. Exactly, right? he was actually going to the example Did page and his uh, compiling. Garrett's uh, blink in the LED. Uh, that's right. Lab? Yeah, uh, that's a good one. That, those are. Yep. Yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, no, he he got it <laughs> it's done. Pretty good for an eight-year-old. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> yeah, hey, like we said, everyone out there, we uh, we try to make this as easy on you guys as possible with the examples and the tutorials. Um, new video content coming out all the time through the live streams as well as through our YouTube channel. Um, we've got stuff on the wiki. The wiki page is a great resource if you want a little bit more in-depth information about some of the stuff you're interested in. Um, yeah, and we have some people following along in MP Lab and the MP Lab ID oh, as well. Oh, sweet. Yes. So yeah. uh, you got some great participation. Why don't you uh, continue on? Yeah, let us let, let's keep going. Yeah, don't forget. Right. Yeah, people watching, you know, if you. Uh, catch us not being live, you can always still comment. We'll reply. If you have questions, do the same. So, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. Or watch the other live streams, especially the one we just recently had. That's a good one. Yeah. Covering yeah. the AVR products. That's correct. Yeah. There are more coming up. So, yeah. Yep. Stay tuned. All right. All right. Let's do this. All right. So, uh, like I was saying, if you have a lot of these pins right there, right? I yeah. mean, the easiest way you can kind of keep track of it is uh, naming it. And if the name shows up here, that is even better. And it actually does that. So if I select the RS0 as an output, you can immediately see right there, it, it showed the pin 27 is RS0, and it, it was selected as a GPIO. So it's, it's, it's very informative, very easy to follow right. uh, for if, when the project specialist gets larger. Do the color codes mean anything, or is it just uh, a yeah. Yeah, program? Yeah, so there, there are actually three different colors usually you can see here. Okay. And when we add, add more projects, uh, our more peripherals, you'll see different colors as well. So the easiest way that these colors work is the, the, uh, when you have the blue ones, right. the blue ones, that means you can actually select this, 
in the same row, you can select multiple different pins. Okay. And if you have a green, which is like this, that means it has been selected, it has been oh, locked. Oh, the one on the bottom right there? Right, okay. right. It's locked and selected. Then there's another color will show up, which sometimes I always use as an orange color. I mean, it's kind of hard to see colors in this screen, yeah, but it's, it's especially oranges. Color, color blind <laughs> yeah, yeah. That screen. But uh, on the orange color, actually, you can. What that means in a row, you can only select one, and okay. we'll actually have, see that tonight, actually, in one of the papers oh, one we'll of the, add. All right, we'll wait. actually show that colors. Yep. So it locks up that row. You can't select. You can only no, select you can one. only select one in okay. that row. Yes. Oh. Yes. All right, so uh, a little over, I'm going to go over a little bit on this, uh, how this MCC, how different parts are. So on my, uh, to the left is project resources. Here you're actually going to see all the peripherals and everything you're going to add later on. It'll show up there for now. It's defaulted to system module. We also have pin module and interrupt module. Once you're going to add those, it's going to populate uh, different options in there as well. Right below is one of the most important part, which is the device resources. Um, what that means in this, Pick 16 f 18855 the MCU that we have. Yeah. Uh, all the peripherals that we have are right there. For that particular product, right? That's so correct. there's a different product. Mm -hmm. It won't, you know, It'll be on, different. Right, depending on the peripherals on that yes. feature set. Okay. It'll be very different. And also, uh, down below, we have some libraries that will also show up. They're available for this device. And uh, underneath, you can see the versions, different versions and everything. Um, all the different versions that we're using, all the different versions are available, and you can change as well. The, the, uh, excuse me, the different versions of Different the versions MCC. of the different libraries, oh, actually, okay. and the gotcha. core and all those okay. things, yes. Now, here you can see I already have a Microelectronica Click and Foundation Services library loaded. I right. mean, these steps, I didn't really show you guys how to do it, but I mean, there are plenty of uh, yeah, Matt, uh, Matt and Wayne will make sure that that, that information is yeah. it, the, it's posted on our comment yes. page or... Um, so we, yeah, on the description, and uh, they can post it. I mean, if, if you go to uh, our Express page, and there, yeah, there are videos we'll on Yeah, also we'll have it if you go microchip.com forward slash click into MCC. Mm. It'll be on there, too. Yeah, yeah. Matt, question there? Yes. Uh, so if you guys want more information, uh, specifically surrounded by the live streams, you can actually check out our page at microchip.com forward slash live stream, and that will have a list of all the materials that they've used in this tutorial that you guys can pick up yourself and get jumping right off of where Mamoon le leaves off at the end of this. Um, and that will also contain uh, content, links to content and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to jump directly to microchip.com forward slash live stream, uh, tomorrow morning for sure we'll have all that stuff uh, starting to get up uploaded in the next couple of days here. And that'll be probably the easiest way to get the stuff directly pertaining to today. All right, thank you, Matt. All right. Always very informative. Yep. Okay, so we're going to jump into the next phase, which is the system module. Okay. So in system module, that kind of shows you the information about the uh, MCU. So okay. different clocks, different oscillator that we're going to be using, and all the different uh, uh, set up for uh, different registers as well. So if you look here, we have an oscillator selection, and if in, from the drop-down menu, we have high-frequency internal oscillator selected. Uh, we also have other options there, too, we can select. And then we also have the clock the speed selector too. I uh, can also have a clock divider. And you know the best part is I can just go to the clock divider and change the clock divider. And you can see the current system clock on the top shows up right there. It's calculus and everything. You don't have to dig into the data sheet to find out which one what you're using. Okay. You just change the two megahertz. I can go back and change to uh, four, and it becomes one megahertz. But yep. for this demo, we're just keeping that as default, or yeah. Or? Well, for this demo, for our, this uh, demo, we're not gonna change any of these. We're gonna just leave it as, as it default. is. Okay. Uh, yeah. And but you same, have that. What's mm -hmm. nice though, you have that capability if, if needed. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Gotcha. And same as uh, registers view as well. So once you actually go to the next tab, it has all the different setup for all the different configuration bits and everything right there. You can all make changes. And if you want to know in details on each, what each of those means, obviously, there's a data sheet right. in this part That's that you can open. That's when you go open. into the data sheet, go to That's the next right. phase, and look a little bit, and look dig a little, little deeper. deeper. Yep. 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 Okay. All right. And uh, we already talked about uh, the graphical representation of the MCU to the right. Down below, you have the pin manager, which we'll use later on at the same time. So it's, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. All right, the first uh, step we are going to do is uh, we're going to add the click board. So we have a microelectronic heart rate click, right? I've been talking about that. Yeah. Uh, it's and right um, here. yeah, and uh, let's let's take oh, a look. Yeah. Sorry. There. <laughs> there you go. That's nice right there. Yes, it's an optical sensor uh, based uh, heart rate click. 
and uh, it's very cute. It's shaped like a heart. It's shaped like a heart. In case you're wondering what it does, yeah. <laughs> measure the heart rate, right? The heart rate click. Yeah. So yeah, it actually, if you look at it, there, there are little sensors on the top. Oh, I see. And, yep, right yeah, there. there, there are three different things in there. There is a IR LED. There is a red LED, and there is a photo. So once completed, I'll just. The person will put their finger mm -hmm. on there, or thumb, or elbow, yes. and then a sense. Okay. That's correct. That's correct. And then, <laughs> then you can do it. Actually, will be able to see the heart rate data. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm gonna go back to the MCC, and from MCC you can see under microelectronic clicks there is a sensors, and under sensors we have a heart rate sensor. So I'm just gonna double click on heart rate sensor, and. Uh, you can see it's it's gonna get added to the project and it oh, matches. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Double yep. check, make sure you have the right. Click. You have the right click. And uh, if you actually look in the, under information, it kind of talks about what this is, and it also takes you, if you click this link here, which is Mixer Electronica's link, uh, website I'll take link. For more information, like the yeah, data, yeah, it'll the take you to their page the... and everything. Yeah, it, it'll have all the information and all the data sheet and the schematics and everything in their website. In case you want to figure out what pins go to what or additional. That's correct. Okay. Yes. And you know, once I selected that, there is another interesting thing happened. So if you look, uh, if you remember, guys, from the PowerPoint slide that I showed earlier, on the PowerPoint slide we say that hey, we're going to communicate with uh, over I squared C oh, communication yeah. with the with the clickboard, right? And that I squared C communication requires a setup that you, it's a peripheral that you have to add, and this this device does have that peripheral. So you go into the click and modify it there, or yeah. So what happens is once you add that click in MCC, okay. MCC is actually smart enough to know that, hey, it requires I2C communication. So okay. it automatically adds, so the foundation services automatically adds that I2C wow, communication peripheral. It's yeah. making it easier yes, and easier it's now. very, very easy. Yeah. So we don't even have to go in and add that. We just go in and set up a little bit of a pin configuration on that, which I'll go in detail That's a little great. bit later. Yeah, yeah, but especially it's taken if you're care new of. to this, uh, you know, you're exactly. using the tools and. Yeah, it's, the, it's already It's great projects for, you know, people that want to pick up, you mm -hmm. know, engineering or electronic type of, um, Applications or yeah. evaluation tools. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. All right. So uh, next step is we're gonna set this up. So I'm gonna click on configuration, and uh, in configuration we have some different uh, stuff that we have to configure. But uh, the easiest thing to do here is actually to use the example code that is generated by MCC. So this box is checked by default, and it tells you, hey, if you want to use the generated example that the MCC will give you. And that will actually require HR only mode, a, a sample of 100 samples per second. I mean, those are the parameters they gave us. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to follow that. So from there, I have the mode to a heart rate only, which is already selected. Okay. Now, the sample rate I have to select is 100 samples per second. So I'm just going to select 100 samples per second. And the next thing is pulse width of 1600 microseconds. So I'm just going to go pulse width of 1600 microseconds. And you know these numbers, they, they actually represent something. If you look at the data sheet which we looked uh, on the clipboard, this is this is the best resolution you can get with these possible numbers. Okay. And that's I was going to ask that question: mm -hmm. Is it for the the actual Express Evaluation Board? It's uh, for the clicks, the, actually. It's okay, it's yeah, the it's clicks. for the click boards. Yeah. Okay. So this 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 will give you the best resolution. Now, you know, obviously, you can change these numbers around and you know change the different yeah, resolution depending, depending on, what on the resolution, your situation yeah. is. Yes. Okay. Um, now the next two things are IR LED and red LED, which uh, the maximum it supports is 50 milliamp. So we're just gonna go 50 milliamp to get the best resolution possible. All right. So we're just gonna get done with that. And you know, there's one one more thing. It also says you have to set up a one millisecond timer zero interrupt. Okay. So what you have to do is we have to add a timer and set up that interrupt. This is for the timing purposes to send the data. So is mm. that for the board, uh, the express evaluation board? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so you have to go back to the. So I have to go back to add that to okay. my project, and it's very simple, guys. It's very simple. Like you can see how I can just go to the add the timer, right? Show us how simple. <laughs> yeah. All right. So easy thing to do is go to device resources, right? And that's where we we know what we have in this board. So I'm just going to go to device resource and see, oh, there is a timer. And on the, the timer, we have timer 0 through timer 6. So we have all the timers in this device. And I'm just going to click on the timer 0. That's what they want us to do, right, mm -hmm. on the example code. So I'm just going to double click on timer 0. And once you double click, it should get added to our project. And it is. It'll default to the easy setup window. And uh, these, these are also, they, they ask for 1 millisecond. That is the number they're given. Now I found out uh, to get the best result, I would actually use a 16-bit mode uh, with a high-frequency internal oscillator. 
and this, this actually gives the best resolution possible. Um, now I'm just going to go to the right and uh, do one and then hit enter and that will round up to the actual period of one millisecond. Oh, I see. It made right. the change right below there. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, it's just all I did. I just type, type it. And obviously, the, it's all getting calculated in the background, and all those things are taken care of. Um, now, they said set up interrupt of timer zero, right? So yeah. obviously, we have to do a cool. checkbox and enable timer interrupt right oh, there. OK, yeah. And oh, that could be, yeah. It's a simple that's something, mistake, I'm yes, sure. That's something you guys have to pay attention to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So once uh, it actually so click and, and yes. make sure that's clicked. Make sure that box is checked, yes. Oh, Otherwise, your interrupt will not work, obviously. That's how you know you initiate a timer interrupt, timer zero Would interrupt. it give you a, an error in case something like that happened, or just you so will notify it when you get the data? Or? That's correct. So it will actually not tell you what's wrong, because you know, as, as an MCC, it does not know what you're trying to program. But once you compile, obviously, to use oh, that okay. example, it will give you an error. I see. Saying okay. that, hey, but you will eventually for... see the error yes, and yes. know, OK. Mm -hmm. But good. what MCC does, though, is, it's a good point, Edwin, that uh, MCC does notify a few things here and there. So in the under notification window, you do have some stops that will tell you. It's a good, good stop to actually keep an eye. Because some of the stops, if it shows up as red and it tells you, like, hey, you completely messed up on this particular peripheral or this particular pin configuration, you can just go to the notification and kind of see right, what's going on. It could be something on. simple, like. It could be something simple that, he, hey, you selected this peripheral, but you never activated it. You're scratching like your that. head and figuring out why the lab exactly. is yeah, throwing your tools uh, at the wall. Yep, that's correct. All right, so we have done this far. Now, um, you know, we have to see that how it communicates over two wires, like we keep talking about this two wire I squared C communication. But how does it really work? I mean, uh, which pins do you, does it really use? Mm -hmm. And that's something, obviously, you can open up the data sheet and find out. But you know, there's an the easiest way to do it. Oh, yeah, and you're saying about the, the schematic exactly. on, the on the box so itself. So if you actually see the box, yeah, if you see the box, then the box itself, there is a small little diagram that actually shows yeah. all the pin configuration. And, and it's also on the website. It's also on the website. You can on download the, the, on the full schematic the, and the everything. Schema yeah, the full yep. schematic, you figure out what pins are. OK, and uh, oh, sorry, if you look at the board, yeah, I'm just going to see the boards here. You can see the SCLI, I don't know if it's very hard to see, probably. You yeah, can I can't even see it. Yeah, I'm that's true. Right <laughs> <laughs> OK, but I'm telling you guys, this is there. Uh, once you get a board, trust obviously. Them. I, I, trust <laughs> you can I can see, see it. it. Yeah. Yep. So, it's, so there's a data and a clock line, and it's actually RC3 and I'll, RC4. I'll follow using the board, yep. Yeah, RC4, it's, it's written on the yep. board as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see it from there, and that's, that's, that's what's being used for uh, communication. You said between. RC4? RC3 and RC4, oh, yep. yeah. We have mm -hmm. two lines, which is the data and the clock. They're right above the 5 volt. Yes, yep. yes, gotcha. that's correct. Now, uh, what happens is uh, if you actually go back to a pin configuration, and then we can see there is a default selection of RC4 and RC3 for HD and SCL. So this is kind of reversed of what we need to do. So you would think immediately, OK, why don't I just click in RC3, right? And here, oh, look at that. It's saying you cannot do uh, that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now message, remember, Edwin, yeah. that you were asking me what the color codes mean? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yes? Uh -huh. So what happens is, if in this color code, you can see this is all orange, right? So once you so select one. So that means you can select one row. Yes. Uh, one only one, so it'll one. move. Now the problem is once it wants to move from RC4 to RC3, RC3 is already selected for the clock line. So MCC is telling you that, hey, if you use RC3 as a clock, I squared C does not work on the same wire. So you have to select something else. Okay. Now at this point, you think, okay, so how about I just deselect this? Oh, we try that, but it doesn't let you do it either. So you have to do the other one first? No, so oh. what we're going to do here is you're going to move the pin around because as a default, you have to have two pins for I2C to work. So we're just going to do, use a little trick. So I'm just going to move this RC3 to maybe RC5, right? And it lets you move. And you can see all of those pins are orange. So just one got selected and everything else got deselected. Now I'm just going to move the SDA to RC3 now. Okay. And move back the SCL to RC4. Now we are reversed. Ah, so you temporarily have to shift it. I'm to, just going to shift it a little bit, yes. And then it allows you to select the pin. That's correct. And it just happened to be this case in this particular board, guys. I mean, it's not true for maybe high pin count board, or curiosity high pin count. It could be different pin configuration. It's just that there's a default selection. And from the default selection to you know, this, uh, this other, other board based on the board that you're going to be using, it could be a little different. Yeah. And this is all highlighted in your. Um, code anyway, example, 
right? So yes, yes. So we are going to actually have a step-by-step -step instruction, like I was saying in the example. We're going to post that up right. um, sometime, actually. And uh, you'll see all those things are highlighted there. All those things are going to be step-by-step -step documented that how it's done and everything. Okay, and if we have viewers who are watching right now, they can, they can follow us. They'll be ahead right of the game, now. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's great. All right. All they need is the, hopefully, maybe they have the... Yeah, they'll get the board, the hopefully. Click. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know what Matt has lined up for them, but hopefully they'll get some of the subs. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So... Hold on. Uh, let's go to Matt real quick. Hey, Mamoon. That was a great lead-in. Okay. To uh, what we're going to do now, and that is our first prize giveaway. So we've been uh, picking names back here, and at random, we picked one out of the hat. And Nirmal Sarkar, you were there right way early in the beginning and um, some good questions. So what you're going to do is you're going to email me at livestream at microchip.com. That's livestream at microchip.com. And we'll go ahead and send you a heart rate click and an express board. So you can literally follow along so or not follow along, but <laughs> you can uh, follow, catch, the, video catch, follow yeah, the video later yeah. on. Follow the video later on. There we go. Thank you. Well, go ahead, go ahead That's say awesome. That name again. That is Nirmal Sarkar. I, and I just I, wanted to hear you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I do apologize if I, uh, if I mis misspoke or uh, mispronounced it there. But, um, but yeah. So that's great. Our first winner. Oh, that right. is our oh. first winner. So nice. congratulations. And that's by, great. Awesome. By, by the way, uh, Matt, do you want to have some discussion about uh, you know, the rest of the express boards and whatnot that are available um, on microchip.com? I mean, have we talked about that? Oh, that's true. So we do have a, a few different express boards, and we will. Uh, I think it's the we have a K forty two. Yeah, we we have express boards for each uh, for for a few different product families. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you go to microchip.com slash express, like Mamoon here is uh, telling you, there's actually a little section down there that, that talks about hardware, um, and the express boards are all listed. There are actually I think four available right now. Yep. Yeah. We have. Um, yeah. We have. Um, excuse me. We have a twenty pin. Which uh, the Pic 16 F 153, 153 XX, yeah. Uh, yep, XX products. That's very popular in Brazil, isn't it? That yep, you're right. <laughs> that is very popular in Brazil. They really um, something about that product. I think it's the feature sets on there. It's a great mm. family. And then there's also like Matt was saying, the K42. That's yeah. a 40 pin. So we have those express evaluation boards in 20 pins and 40 pins. Mm. Um, and then we have our standard express, express board. Express boards, right. And if you want to go move up to the next step, you have the Curiosity, Curiosity standard, Curiosity which count, supports yes. 8 to 20, uh -huh. to correct me if I'm wrong. That's and then correct, it goes right. to 28, the high pin count goes to 28 to 40. Yes, that's correct. And then correct. we have the other uh, development tools. Yeah, we have other development tools. We have Pick like, 3 that you can use pretty much to program anything. Well, I was going to say there. Explorer 8, right? Yeah, Explorer then, 8. Uh, Explorer 8 is a development board again, and then you, ha you, ha you have to have a tool, which is the PK3 or ICD3 or 4. Or no, hmm. But have, yeah, yeah, if someone want, but these are great if you want to get started. They're plug and play. That's correct. Um, again, we move forward with your demo, you'll show how easy it is to just drop oh, yes, and drop. Oh, yeah, that's, that's very, it's very different for, pe for people who never actually use this yeah, board. Yeah, it's like using a thumb drive, <laughs> yeah, you know? That's right. Yeah, you have, you have to be played with you, it, huh? Yeah, you, you just have to be careful, you know, drop a picture in there exactly. and get an error message. <laughs> yep, no, we will see, we will see how yeah. to program it. This is very simple. It's, it's a very nicely done, actually, tool, I'd have cool. to say. Yep. Any more uh, comments or questions there, Matt? No, but I guess it uh, sounds so easy, your younger brother can do it, doesn't it? Yep, well, right. His, his younger brother is probably already an engineer. <laughs> That's kind of what it sounds like. You're getting yeah. started early. So. He got his degree on YouTube.com. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. YouTube and Dr. Google, two of my favorite professors. Yep. Um, sweet, Mamun. Well, yeah, why don't you uh, keep taking us forward in what we got going on today? All right, all right. So at this point, we are done setting up the click, right? Now, you know, Express Board is going to get all the data and everything. But the, here's the thing I mean, uh, what's going to happen to the data? I mean, we, we don't know, right? Oh, you mean when it's reading exactly. it back? Right, oh yeah. So we want to see that, and like we were talking about earlier, like we're going to get that data off of that board and we're going to put it in a computer. We're going to view that data. Yeah. And to do that, we're going to have to set up some USB communication, which we have a module on that chip is the USART So module. what tool do you, uh, for your particular demo, what you use? So I actually, I'm going to use a USART uh, peripheral, which is built into the chip. Okay. Using that, we're going to send that data over with the BSCDC or USB link to the computer. 
And then to plot that data, we actually have a homegrown software that actually we're going to use. And oh, I'll nice. show you how to get that as well. So is it like a, do you get a text message or just uh... <laughs> No, no, it's oh, actually okay. installed install software in your computer. Okay. And uh, you're just going to install it. And it will actually plot the data real time. So it very much looks like an heart rate data that you would see in, in a medical oh, so device. So you can take like that heart, and then yeah. just plot it you can out. Just plot see it, it right like. there. Mm, yep. Interesting. And one of our genius engineers actually has been working on that. And he has done some great job on that. Yeah. We'll, we'll show how to get that. And, We'll demo it real time. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's All right. Let's move you know, on. at this point, uh, I usually what I like to do is I used to I save like to it? hit. Yeah. So oh, yeah. the way you save it <laughs> is actually I I'd like to generate the code. So what happens is if you're in a shared network or if you're in Wi-Fi, especially, um, I usually like to do it. So even if there is a disconnection from right. the Wi-Fi or even your computer has some issues, it at least save up to that point. But one and, thing to bring up, uh, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. Um, for those, at that point, you want to be either signed into your, uh, you want to either correct. create an account <laughs> yes. or be signed into yeah, your Yeah, I mean, I don't see why you'd not, you would not create an account. It's free account, guys. It's completely yeah. free. And you know it gives you 10 gig of code space. I mean, yeah. I don't know how long it's going to take to write 10 gigs right. of code. The only thing you have to be careful is Matt will start emailing you. And, and <laughs> it's, but, it's, but yeah, overall, uh, it's free. And it's, it's completely free. And even if anyone actually bought something from Microchip, or if you've ever sampled, like request a free sample from right. Microchip, you can still use that same account. It's the same account. It's tied up with the same account. So mm -hmm. you don't even have to create a new one. That, you and that's one that you bring in. up a good point. There's some people that, are, that don't know that if you mm -hmm. want to sample some of the products, yeah. You can definitely go to our website, and they're free. Yeah, yeah, they're. I mean, sometimes they can I think request, for example. I'm not sure you have for shipping, but yeah, I mean the the product yeah. itself are free. Very so Go they in can there, sample it. Yes. You could, uh, you know, sample this uh, mm -hmm. the Pix 16 one eight eight five five, or yeah. maybe some of the newer products. Exactly. You know, actually, ABR you, products yeah. or uh, Pick products. Yeah, yeah. If you go to the parametric search and go to the product page, it will actually tell you if it's available for free sample. Yeah, different Almost packages. all of them are free sample. Especially yeah. if you bought the Curiosity board mm -hmm. and want to try something else. That's correct. Um, yeah. You know, uh, PDA, you know, get a PDA package yep. and it just pop out other one and you yep. know use Replace the new it. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, it's if definitely you want to maybe something with higher memory mm -hmm. or more, uh, different peripherals, yes. different features. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Nice. All right. Cool. So at this point, I am just going to go back to MCC and add the eCert module that we have been keep talking about. And where do I find it, Edwin? Under device resources, right? Yes, yes. that is correct. So that's where we have all those things that we have for a pick, right? So I am going to connect, uh, expand the eCert module. And you can see there are two different ones to show up. It's actually only one there. But what happens is we have the foundation service of the smart tool running in the background. It uses, for depending on the uh, clipboards that we're using, it uses depending on different type of peripherals. So the other one is the PIC 10, PIC 12, PIC 16. That's the one for us to use. Okay. That's the one we're going to use. That's the best practice. I mean, if you use the other one, probably it will still work. But you know, the best practice would be to use the other one that is available for us. So I'm just going to double click on it. And uh, it's going to get added to the project. And if you look to the right, um, we have uh, enable user. Yes, it's enabled. We want to enable transmit. So I'm just going to check that box. And the baud rate and all those other setups, are, we can pretty much leave it as, leave it as it is for our Default. application. Okay. It's fine, yeah. The error is 0.160%, which is, you know, is perfectly fine for our application. It's okay. not going not gonna to bother anything. But yeah, we do have choices for different baud rates and other sections here. Uh, now down below, we are going to do is redirect a standard I.O. to user. So I'm just going to redirect the I.O. to this user pin. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to check that box. It's as simple as that. I check that box and I'll just uh, do that configuration in the background. Uh, now, we have done the user model setup, but once again, we have to tell the, uh, tell the MCC that, hey, which pin the user model will be using. Now, now we're going to find that out. Once again, you can go back to the data sheet that we have. Or, or check the out box. the schematic. Yeah, yeah or the box the and the schematic. So once again, guys, it's just a very handy tool. The picture on the box is it's, it's <laughs> very helpful. A lot of things, just looking at it here, you can get it that done. That makes it very convenient yeah, yes. to have everything on there. Yep, yep, it's, it's a very nice thing. OK. All right, so if from here, you can see for the TX and RX, actually, is the RC0 and RC1. They're written here for the USB communication. So I'm just going to go in here and select RC0 and RC1. Right there, TX and RX is set up Perfect. for me. And you can see um, the TX RC6 is actually selected by default, which for our application we don't need to. But once again, that's a, that's a, that's a row that actually has you know, blue lines. So okay. we can actually select multiple simultaneously. But uh, for our case, we're not going to do it. But in our case, maybe your application might need that, and you can just select it. All right. So I'm just going to select that. Okay. So now that we 
All right. Now we're going to generate code again, right? Okay. So once I'm done, I'm just going to hit generate code. All right. And it says it has been successfully generated. Wow, that's that's yeah. pretty fast. Yes. Now I'm just going to minimize this and go back to my ID. Hit OK here. And you can see uh, to the left right there, right away, is we have main.c that has been created for us. And uh, other than main.c, we also have all the source codes, all the header files. They're all created for us. I mean, look at that. I mean, MCC has done all of this for us already. It's fantastic. That, that is fantastic. Yep. That's, and, uh, that's from, pretty quick. I mean, <laughs> yes, it is. If we didn't have, you know, yeah, you'd be done. Oh, pretty... yeah, there are a lot of codes in there. There are a lot of codes. So the easiest thing I'm going to do is right now, I am just going to use the hardware example. So I'm just going to click on hardware example.h. And if you scroll down, you can see the hardware example.h function. So I'm just going to select the whole function and just copy it with control C and go back to my main.c. And inside of this while one loop, I'm just going to paste that. Uh, make sure to get rid of the void inside of it. And once you do that, that's pretty much it. But there are a couple of things you have to do here. And you guys you should pay attention to this because this is a, this is a, this is something that you know is maybe not very intuitive to do, but this is something you have to do to okay. to take advantage of the codes that are being generated from MCC. So what you're gonna do is to use this function. It's main.c is a template that created M MCC created for us, mm -hmm. but it does not know what files you're gonna use in there, like especially for the examples. So I'm just gonna have to include the example file. So well, how you're gonna do it? If you go on the top. In the include section, I'm just going to copy the whole line, which is the include for mcc.h file. I'm just going to paste it right underneath. And right below, I'm just going to change the path. I'm just going to edit the path, which is heart rate. All right, h-e-a-r-t-r-a-t-e underscore example. And dot h, then it should be able to see that file, which is, you know, now it's pointing to the heart rate right. underscore example dot h. Uh, once I have the include done, remember we set up the interrupt, right? That's for the correct. Yeah, for the timer. So to make the interrupt available, to make the interrupt work, we're just going to enable the interrupt, which is the global interrupt and the peripheral interrupt for the timer. We're just going to uncomment these two lines, and we should be good to go. And the whole reason being, once again, guys, this is, this is the template that MCC gave us. It mm -hmm. just gave us code that you know, we may or may not be able to use, right? So this is what it is. It's, it's good to go. And at this point, if we, are, do we have done everything correctly, I am just going to hit the Make and Program Device icon, and it should compile. It should compile and, and everything. Could, after that, you plug it in? And yes, after that, we're going to plug it in, and All then right. we're going to program the board and see how it works. Sweet. All right. So it's compiling, and let's I'll, see. While you do that, I'll plug uh, I'll yeah, put yeah, the yeah, click in. Yeah, yeah, let's plug this in. And exactly. one thing you want to make do is put it the right Yes, you know, yes. Direction. You want to yes. match your, uh, yes, you know, your grounds. Yeah, the ground and VDD, you want to match that, yes. OK. All right, you're all set right here. You're all set? OK. So you want to, you plug, need to plug it, it in? in? Yes, please do. All right. We're in. All right. So if you go back to your computer screen, all right, you can see uh, the Express board showed up as literally like a master storage device oh, yeah, like or like a flash drive. Right, yep. Yeah, you can actually open that up. And you can see in the flash drive, it's, it's right there. And it's just there's a readme file. It'll take to different web pages and stuff. Uh, now what I'm going to do in my download folder, I can see the heart rate, uh, the, 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 the project that we did. It mm -hmm. created, it compiled, and downloaded a hex file. A compiled file. I'm just gonna. And that's where you're gonna drag and drop over. That's to correct. Them. I can drag and drop. I can copy and paste. It's depending up to you guys. And I can. I'm just gonna drag and drop okay. and go do this right there. It's gonna take a second and boom. See that? Wow. Yeah, it's just that fast. <laughs> that it's is just programmed, fast. and you can see. So now this is okay. So this is ready to use now. Yes. Now Whoa. you can see right there. There is a LED right oh. there, and they, that LED turns red for a fraction of a second. That's how long it takes. I don't know if you, how good it can yeah, see, but yeah, it's kind of hard to see. But yep. It's, yeah, it's, it's And then it should be done. Um, now, I'm going to use a program that you can download uh, oh, that yeah, I was talking that, yeah, about. Yeah. That, um, so you can find that. I already have it downloaded and installed in my computer. But right. I'm going to show you how you can find that. So you just go to github.com. And in the github.com, uh, that's where we host the program. And it's going to search github.com right. and uh, search for prototyping with sensors. But in, in, in mm -hmm. case you didn't want to use this, you could use something else, right? You had a couple other ones you, you mentioned. Right. So what happens is if you don't want to use this particular one, you just want to see the raw data, you can use any terminal program, okay. like you know, PuTTY or TerraTerm, CoolTerm, any of those programs. 
and uh, from there um, you can actually uh, you can actually see the data it's coming off it's nice. hitting the data yeah right. so once I go in github and uh, search for prototyping with sensors it shows up uh, a lot of few different ones uh, the first one is effortless design workshop so I'm just gonna click there and uh, if you click there you can see there are three releases so from three releases if you click there the first one is Wi-Fi click enable tool now this is uh, always look for the latest one uh, it's released from perky guy and uh, it's actually if you, you look at the released version there are three different ones you have I have the exe.exe is for Windows the DMG for uh, Mac and the TR for Linux oh, okay. so you can what was download the any of those sorry uh, it's perky guy okay, is the sure username you yeah so you usually this use this account and uh, from this account you can uh, you can actually find the latest one whatever the latest one is released okay so I have it downloaded and installed, so I'm just going to go back and open this up, which is the program that All I already right. have installed. It's the standard installation process for any other software. And so you should be able to see some stuff. So oh, there, there you go. go. Whoa, yeah, I'm look alive. At that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So yeah, if you actually place your finger. I yeah, see, let me set it on the board. Yeah. yeah, it's an optical sensor, obviously, based on how you hold it and all those things. Oh, yeah, you uh, probably can't variables. see that I have my finger. Hold on. Yeah. For the camera, for the people out there watching. <laughs> Yeah, so I place my, my finger right on top right there, mm -hmm. and then just holding it. Right, right, and it, it, it will give us very nice data. I don't know if you guys want to switch over to the, the plot that uh, we're seeing. Yeah. It looks like I'm pretty healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it looks like we're all alive and good yeah, to go. This, this live stream's got me... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. I'll, you know. So it, there are few, I mean, you can kind of play around with it depending on how you want to hold it. You place your finger nicely. If you right. put it in a nice surface, and then it'll give us better. Could it do my <laughs> forehead? Yeah, you can probably do that too. It looks at the reflection of our blood. So yeah, you should be able to do that too. <laughs> this is actually a better view for the people watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, we're getting a good data oh, yeah, too. You are. Yeah, oh, that's cool. I see it. Cool. Uh, right. Matt, any questions? Oh, on a demo, are people are following through or following w with us? Yeah, no, we're getting some, continue to get some great participation. Um, I would be remiss uh, following up with everything else not to, Mamu, and let you know that your mother is also yes. watching and oh, loves you. Mom, Mom says oh. hi. Thank you, Mother. Mom is very <laughs> proud of her son, uh, as she should be. He's a great engineer. Um, and this is a great project, guys. We've had a lot it's of better. positive feedback from this. Uh, we do this in effortless design classes which you can check out the link to in the uh, below the video here. Um, if you're following up later on or if you're watching it live right now, you can <coughs> check that out after the live stream. But um, if it's something that you're really, really interested in and not just so much uh, Mamoon's class specifically, although that is the highlight of my week, but um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's only Monday. I mean, it's only Monday. <laughs> exactly. It only goes down from here. Um, but uh, I guess they can they can get information on how to continue their projects, bring them to market, some different things like that. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. It's uh the other thing is uh yeah there's there's going to be a, a additional video content up there on the effortless design page. Uh, for example, Mamoon, um, you have a condensed version of this particular uh, demo right here. Yes, uh, it's yeah. yet to release, but yeah, we will. After awesome. the yeah. workshop, maybe awesome. <laughs> maybe live stream. Yeah. That'd be great. Oh, sorry, yeah. not not to talk about things that haven't been released, but we know what's coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Ram, Ram Ramsey Ramsay to uh, answer your question, I I also think that this is kind of a DIY version of the Apple Watch, where it allows you to do a lot of different things. Ah, We've had people in yes, our classes that mm. is true. Um, use their use the uh, pulse in their wrist, pulse in their finger. I haven't seen anyone complete a successful forehead pulse, but I'm sure the <laughs> possibilities are endless. And by yep. the way, so, so uh, since the two of you can't see the comments, I'll, I'll actually read the question or the uh, comment. Uh, he says he thinks it's better than the Apple Watch because you're getting output wherever you place it on your body. Uh, that is true. That's a good point. That's, that's <laughs> entirely yeah, true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. So... I guess we are starting to wrap up. If you guys have any last minute questions, um, I know one question that we often get is the uh, just how to continue to. Um, I'm drawing a blank. Jeez, I'm having a, a space moment. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know where I was going. It's with that. late I'm here. I'm sorry, guys. It's late it's here. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I don't get these curly locks just because I uh, don't sleep. So, <laughs> I well, one my one thing I would sleep. add here, Matt, real quick, uh, from my experience with different workshops and everything that I have done throughout the 
uh, of all uh, different uh, whole countries actually have been to different places and always is uh, you know how how I can actually have an idea and how, what can I do with it how you can help me out with it right so this is one of the best hard courses and you know it's, it's uh, I would say obviously we are here to help right and we can we cannot really handhold everybody but we have created all these different documentations. We have wiki documents. We have examples out right. there. Our and forums are great. Forums are great as well. If you go to well. our website, there's mm -hmm. a link to our forums. Or so if you go to, um, excuse me, express. Express website, yes. Yeah, there's yeah. a link, there's to, the a link forum, in the forum, to the wiki too. page. Yep. Uh, you can always email us. Uh, you know, we have that email on the yes. comments yes. for the live stream. If and you have any random yeah. questions yeah. about um, the projects you're working on. Or, or anything, or any other oh, ideas, yeah. yeah. And you know, what happens is once we, once we pass that, we, uh, we also have design partners that work with us. Yes. And the design partners can also help you design the product, and you can, they can actually they work closely and with us as well. And that information is also on uh, on the website. website. Yes, yeah, exactly. So, so they can actually go, go help you go to the market. I mean, we will be obviously our engineers will be able to help depending on the projects and stuff. Right, too. but they can help you get yeah, to start. But they can definitely give a concept. To, yep, they can make your prototype. They can design your and prototype. And we're providing them with the tools to exactly. get get you wrapped. They're up. always in contact with us. That we are synced up with them with the, what kind of products and what kind of benefits they can get from us. And right. Everything. And yeah. again, yep. this is a great you know. Know, yeah. way to connect with us using these live streams to comment, exactly. ask questions, um, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. get to know us Definitely. better. Yeah. I That's mean, right. you know, I didn't know my moon were, you know. <laughs> yeah. Came, well, yeah. we do have uh, one last question and then we have one last prize giveaway. All right. Um, for that prize giveaway, I didn't want to, I was going to hold this back, but I'm excited. We, so Ramsey, yeah. you, uh, Ra Ramsai, I don't know. Oh, I oh, apologize. You, ju you just messed it up. <laughs> I did. I think I did. But. Hopefully I can make it up to you with a heart rate click and an express board because you were picked as our second winner. Nice. So awesome. congratulations on that. You will be able to follow along with it in uh, the not too distant future. Um, we have a question from Greg Lemons. Is there any documentation on the foundations and libraries? So the foundation service libraries. So foundation services libraries, we uh, do have some uh, videos and stuff that we have done before. Okay. Now, uh, internal documentation wise, not that I am aware of, but we can definitely get back yeah, to well, you on that. Yeah, well, that's something we'll look details, into. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure if you, uh, we have your information, yeah. right? Yeah. So we yeah. can always either post the link uh, yeah. to the to the documentation on uh, the documentation the exists page. for internal use for sure. Uh, but, actually, uh, if yeah. you can shoot, you can also shoot that question to uh, live stream at microchip. Yes, definitely. that is yeah. true. That way, we'll have uh, all your the email information. address. Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if we hear back to you. Maybe you'd be a uh, surprise. Matt might send you something. Like <laughs> maybe. A t -shirt or something. maybe. You, you might like it. You might not. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those uh, uh, yeah. hey, it's late, surprise, so. surprise it bag late. Uh, gifts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our third winner, oh, uh, and oh. this was uh, just a personal pick because I think you've asked some, a lot of great questions, uh, and that is me. Oh, Mamon's <laughs> brother. You're always a winner, Edwin. You're always a winner in my uh, book. But although Mamon's brother has all rate. the boards anyway, though. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. But uh, Krish Rao, you are our third microchip uh, live stream winner for this live stream. So that's once again, that's going to be a heart rate click and an express evaluation board coming your way that's pretty awesome. soon. Wow. Just go that's ahead. A great, that's a great prize. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's had some great questions. Because now all I have to do is either <laughs> watch this video again or follow the, the yeah. example on uh, Express.com. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Or click it's just pretty simple. He'll to even do it by himself probably, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe your brother's available. You make his yeah, own YouTube channel. <laughs> does he have his own YouTube channel? Uh, he, he does. Kind of oh, does. does. Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. He, he started. He, yeah. Oh. Hey, Greg, uh, just to answer your question, seeing as I see that pop up, if you're looking for non-I2C examples, we have a lot of example clicks uh, supported that are through I uh, SPI as well as UART, some uh, just IO-based uh, click examples, and those are all supported in MCC. If you're looking for specific video, uh, YouTube examples, uh, those uh, we have some of those up there, I think, if you go to click into MCC. Yeah. Yes. You can check that out. By the way, Greg can't hear you when you turn to me, so. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good point. Um, but yeah. yeah, so everyone out there, thank you so much for watching. Those of you that are winners, make sure that you send me your shipping address and your phone number uh, for the shipping shipping information that we need. Um, but thank you, everyone out there, for your support, for your encouragement, uh, your questions. Make sure that you are subscribing, like Wayne mentioned earlier. Please do. Uh, it make keeps sure us that, employed. 
keeps us <laughs> keeps us employed, keeps the cogs turning, keeps getting you guys good content and good products. So, Edwin, why don't you take us out? All right. Well, if we don't have any further questions or comments, Mamoon, thank you for oh, thank you. showing us your great demo. Well, thanks, everybody. It's too. awesome way way to rapid design. If yeah. you want to take concept uh, something into concept, uh, I want to thank everybody for watching. Stay tuned. Um, There'll be more uh, live streams coming up. So thank you very much for, uh, and we appreciate you uh, watching. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night or afternoon. <laughs>